Hey everyone, this is Shay Jose. I'm a DJ producer based out of Sydney, Australia. Um, I've got releases on such labels such as Armada, Flashover Recordings, my own label FTFT Records, and up and coming releases on Enormous Chills and Elliptical. Um, so, what I wanted to do today is just cover uh, some ways that you can actually spice up your productions a little bit more, especially when it comes to the drop and some of the tools you can use. Uh, long gone are the days where you have producers actually using uh, things like white noise or squishes uh, effects uh, to bring some tension into the songs just before the drop. So what I'll do is I'll give you uh, three ways of being able to do uh, some uh, effects for your productions, especially before the drop. Uh, two are free and one is a paid way. So. What I've done is I've taken a section of one of my up and coming tracks here as one. Um, and what I might do is I might just let you hear this extract of the song with the original um, effect that I used, which was Valhalla Shimmer. And then what I'll do is I'll run through the other two ways, which will be through using uh, a free tool from Bass Clef called Washout and a paid one by Sound Toys called Crystallize. So what we're doing is actually just concentrating on this component here, this ARP sound. And as you can see, there's actually quite a lot of tension building up to this drop here, um, in this locator. Uh, so what I've done is I've actually just used Valhalla Shima. So that's one way of doing it. Um, so what we might do is, if you don't know, this is a free tool that you can actually download it's actually great. Uh, what it does is it really just gives a really wide sort of reverb and diffusion to any track. So one thing you could do is you could just add a Valhalla Shima, uh, increase the mix, as you can see here, before the drop. I might just solo this so you can hear it again. And I mean, that's really simple, right? I mean, a lot of producers probably know how to actually do this. Um, so that's one way of doing it. Um, the other way you could do it is actually use another free tool uh, from another Aussie producer called Bass Clef, uh, called Easy Washout. So if I scroll to the right here, bear with me. Uh, you can download this from his website. Um, just do a search on Google. It's totally free. And I actually use this quite a lot um, over the one that Data Life actually half because it's a lot lower in processing because it uses all native um, inserts from Ableton. Uh, if we were to open up the rack, uh, you can actually see here. There we go. Um, we've got some grain delay, some auto filter, some reverb EQ, filter delay, and a compressor which all interact through the one knob. Uh, and it actually works really really well. So I'll let you hear what I'll do is I'll write some automation uh, on this particular one And then you can actually just see what the difference might be between using the Valhalla shimmer and actually using this uh, Easy wash app. So I'll let you hear it again. I'll do I might just do it without any effects and Then you can hear it with and then I'll do it with the context of the song So nothing too exciting there. It's really just opening up the cutoff on the ARP. Now, if you put the washout on it, you'll actually hear the grain delay, the reverb and the compressor all kind of working together, uh, which is a great little tool as well. I really like this. I actually use it quite a bit. Um, usually over the Valhalla Shimmer to tell you the truth, but I'll let you hear it uh, in the context of having the rack turned on and then with the song. So this is with it.
So as you can hear, it's kind of similar, but uh, you do really hear the grain delay in there, which adds uh, just a little bit more flavor, I guess, to the sound. Um, another way that you can do it is actually through Crystallizer. Now, this is a paid VST. Uh, it's probably one of my favorite ones, and adds a totally different texture uh, to the sound. Um, I actually like using this one called the Crystal Builders or the Emeralds, one of the two. Uh, now there's two ways you can actually do this. You can actually put it on your bus and actually do it that way, or you can actually put it on a return channel. Uh, if you don't know how to use a return channel, just comment down below. But essentially all it is, is, is a way to actually mix the wet and dry signal together uh, in such a way that you can actually um, mix it with different buses at the same time. You can also save a lot of CPU uh, or just kind of get a different sort of texture um, if you don't want to really affect the entire bus channel. Um, so I'll let you hear how this one actually sounds. Once again, we'll do it uh, without and then with. So this will be without. So totally dry, pretty disgusting, um, <laughs> if I do say so myself. So what we'll do is we'll just automate the uh, the mix knob in here, and we'll basically go from I don't know about a quarter of the way, uh, mix it up. And what this really does is it actually has like a tail delay on it. You really will hear the crystals kind of uh, really come to life after the sound has actually stopped. It, it, it's almost like it's using a compressor into itself to allow the dry signal to come through. It's really hard to explain, but you, you'll see what I mean. Um, so what I might do is just turn this guy on and now let you hear it with. Now one way to actually clean that up, uh, which you can do as well if it's just a bit too much for you, so you can actually group this, so in Ableton you just go Command G, uh, you can create a, another rack in here, and where the crystallizer is, we can just rename this to wet, and we have a dry signal cause is dry. This is another way of doing it if you don't want to use a return channel. Uh, the benefit of this is you can actually grab a compressor. Oh, there it is. This took a while. You can actually grab a compressor, uh, and if you move the compressor channel up, um, what you can do, apologies, let me grab this and put it in the wet channel. You can put the compressor after the crystallizer. So essentially what we're going to do is, we are going to compress, oh, sorry, we are going to side chain the dry signal of this effect rack into the wet signal and allow the crystallizer effect to come and turn and really pump through only after the dry signal has dissipated so uh quick way to, sh to do this is you just basically put the compressor at the end audio from you would choose your your bus which in this case is called up which is up here and what we might do is down the back here up the ratio, bring down the threshold, and in the ARP section, we want to do pre effects, and you want to do it from audio rack, uh, pre effects, dry. So, what this is going to do is it's actually going to side chain the dry signal uh, to allow uh, the crystal loss of VST to come through after the dry signal has. Um, has finished, so I'll, I'll let you listen. So that actually gives you a much cleaner way of doing it. Um, it really does 
kind of only allow the crystallizer VSD to pop through uh, once the drag signal has come through. Now there's one last way you can do this. Um, if you want to save CPU, you could combine all three if you really wanted to. Uh, record this into audio and then just use the audio signal back. Um, or what you could do is also reroute a couple of the instruments, for example, your lead, your ARP, um, your other ARPs or any other plucks for, for that matter. Record them into audio, put a crystallizer, uh, a washout and uh, a shimmer and record them and then just use that as your, I guess, your, um, your effect to build up into the drip. So we might give that a go. Um, so what I might do is just actually create a new audio track. Uh, just set this trigger to record from up. There we go. Up. All we might do is just set the automation up correctly. So we've got the washout. We've got the shimmer. And we've got the crystallizer. All right. Let's see how this sounds. Now the benefit of doing something like this is you can then potentially just grab the audio signal with the Complex Pro. Um, you can reverse this signal and if I turn off all these audio effects that I've created up here, the shimmer, um, we can actually, let me put this up there somewhere. I think it's a, yeah, there we go. Um, we can actually now use this potentially as an effect by itself um, to either fade in or fade out and go away. And essentially, we are now saving on CPU. Now, let's listen to it by itself, see how it sounds, but we might actually take it out of the channel so it doesn't get overly compressed or whatnot. So. So that's another way of doing it. Now it sounds a bit, um, a bit all over the shop. What you could do in this instance, for example, is just grab an EQ8, um, dump it on the channel you've just recorded. Let's uh, EQ some of the lows. And if you really want, we could do something like this as well. We could actually, uh, where are we? We could actually use the washout effect again What is going on with my computer? There we go. Okay. We can actually use this washout effect to send this further back into the mix. So. so if we keep washing out something like this, um, and we could actually use a compressor as well. Side changing it to the kick. Let's drop this down a little bit and see how that actually sounds. And then we'll listen to it in the context of the mix. Let's have a listen. Now, let's see how it sounds. Sometimes this works, uh, sometimes it doesn't, but it's another way that you can actually introduce something different compared to just, you know, a white noise riser. So let's have a listen to see how it sounds in the context of the mix.
So anyways, that's uh, just another trick you might be able to use. Um, usually the more instruments you use, the more leads. It actually, it's very cohesive to the entire track. Uh, and it's another way of being able to actually build your own effects um, and chains and whatnot. Um, so anyways, if you enjoy these, uh, let me know, give me a follow and uh, yeah, uh, if you have any questions, drop them down below. Till next time, talk to you soon. Bye bye.